Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm reading uh, from Genesis 28, starting in verse 10. Jacob left Beersheba and went to Haram. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to the heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And there above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and the south. All peoples of the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, and I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob woke from his sleep, He said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took a stone he had placed under his head and set it up a pillar and poured oil on top of it. And he called the place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on my journey, I am taking, and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I return safely to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God, And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Quite a few years ago, there was a a movie that I was quite spectacular when it came out. Uh, I'm kind of a science fiction buff, and this was a Steven Spielberg movie called Close Encounter of the Third Kind. And it was, uh, it was along the whole genre of, of a- encounters with aliens, which has become a major theme within movies. But this was early in, in that trend. He said that a first encounter of a first kind was like just seeing a a sighting of a UFO. The second kind was seeing actual evidence that there had been a UFO or some kind of alien life on Earth. The encounter of a third kind was actual direct contact from a being from another world. And of course, in this movie, these people who were chosen to, to be a part of this contact were drawn to this place where, of course, in the end, there was a spectacular display of alien technology and spaceships, and, and they, they had this encounter with this alien culture. And that for those individuals, and, and supposedly in the fictional world of of humankind, everything changed because of that encounter. Now I think every one of us and all people want encounters with the unknown, with the mysterious. And 
some of them draw us into something that is better and some are not so good. When I was growing up uh, under this time of when science fiction was becoming so popular, I used to desire to see UFOs, hope and dream about it and think about space travel and all those things. But later on as an adult I encountered God and that was so much better than any of the fictional imaginary things that I had thought about. See, what we need is an encounter of a God kind. We need direct contact with the spirit of the living God, with the presence of God, with the love of God. Not based on technology or the advancement of humans or space travel or any of those things, but in the ordinary, simple things of our lives, we can experience God. God has a way of showing up in unusual and unexpected places, in unexpected ways, to people who you would not expect to encounter God. Jacob being an example. Jacob was not, didn't have the greatest of personalities and character. He was a deceiver. He was a manipulator. He deceived his brother and he caused him to give away his birthright and then later the blessing from his father. And yet God met him in that place, in that time. See, what we need is an encounter, an encounter with God. Many Christians love to, to hear about it, and they, they read books about it, and there's a lot of talk shows and programs like It's Supernatural with Sid Roth. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but <laughs> I, I do love that show. If you want to hear about encounters with God, that's a good show to go to. But... Uh, we hear about these things and we read about them and we read about people's lives have been changed but sometimes we think that we're we're not in the same category we're not in the same place it just doesn't happen to us but the truth is God loves to reveal himself to people especially those who are hungry for his presence and again Jacob who was fleeing from his brother because he had deceived his brother with the help of his mother to receive the blessing from his father, Isaac. And his brother was very angry. So Jacob flees, and he's, he's going to find a wife amongst his own people at the request of his mother. And as he's fleeing, as he's on this journey, in a very ordinary thing, he, he sleeps. He takes a rock and uses it as a pillow, not a very comfortable pillow, but something extraordinary happens to them. And he, he experiences God. Now his father and grandfather, I'm sure, Abraham and Isaac have told him many stories about their encounters with God and the promises that God had given them, the promises of the land, the promises of the blessing on all nations, the promise of a, a nation, a great nation. But I don't think Jacob at this point had had any personal experience, encounter with God himself. He had not had an encounter of the God kind. And now everything changed for him. Now the God of his grandfather and his father would become his God. He would own that relationship. He would own those promises that were given, that were passed down. See, God had chosen him and met him. He wasn't seeking after God, he was running and fleeing and obeying his mother's request. But in the midst of that, God met him. 
You know, a lot of times God meets us when we're on a journey. This is true throughout the scriptures. You see, God has called us to be pilgrims, to be going forward to a destination, to be stepping out in faith and moving in the direction that God leads us. It's when we do that that often we'll have these encounters with God that will strengthen our faith and change us But sometimes we don't want to go. Sometimes we want to just take it easy, settle where we are, not move on. But God wants us to be on this journey. You remember Abraham was on a journey. God had called him out of his country, out of what was familiar, out of his hometown, his people to go to another land, a strange land with a strange language, strange people with different customs and ideas, a land that in many ways could be threatening to him, a foreign land. And he, he did that because he had an encounter with God. He heard God's voice. God spoke to him and gave him promises, and he moved forward on the journey. And on his journey, he kept encountering God at different points of that journey. The journey is important. And sometimes if we're, we're in a place where we're just too comfortable and we don't want to go forward in the journey of faith, sometimes God will push us and even drive us out of the place that we are in. Remember, the people of Israel were on a journey out of Egypt towards the Promised Land, through the wilderness, not a place of comfort, not a place of ease, not a place that they were familiar with. But where did God meet them? Where did he appear to them? Where did he teach them? Where did he shelter them and provide for them and nurture them? It was in the wilderness. It was on the journey in the wilderness as they were going forward, as they were following the cloud, the pillar of cloud of God's presence by day and the fire by night. As they, with Moses as their leader, went forward, God continued to meet them. Now Esau, he was happy to stay where he was, where his local hunting grounds were, and to marry one of the foreign women of that place, which greatly grieved his mother. But Jacob was willing to go ahead to a new journey, to a new part of his life. And I love the way God revealed himself to Jacob. When he was sleeping, you find that it's in dreams many times that God can reveal himself to people. When he was sleeping, he had a vision, a dream. And he saw something that he was not aware of, this ordinary place, this place that had no meaning at all, became a holy place became a place of encounter, became a special place, so much so that he built a pillar as a memorial. He poured oil over it. He realized that this was the house of God. This was the gate of heaven. He realized that heaven and earth were connected, that angels ascend and descend from heaven to the earth that angels are involved in the affairs of men. He saw all this and he was overwhelmed. He was in awe. Surely God was in this place and I was not aware of it. This is an awesome place. You see, an encounter with God transforms ordinary things into something powerful and extraordinary, something sacred, something 
a place for where there's prayer and worship, a place that takes on new meaning. And when we read the scriptures, we are reading about people who have had encounters with God, a personal God who reveals himself to real people in history, in their, in their lives, in the land that they were in, in their journeys that they are taking. God reveals himself. And they do things to remember what God has said. They, they communicate their stories. They pass them on to their kids. And these encounters inspire worship, change lives, new direction, new understanding. People come to realize their destiny in the Lord. It wakes them up from their ordinary lives, which often lack the meaning and the purpose that you can have when God comes and touches you in a way that awakens you. You see, now Jacob, who would later be called Israel after another encounter he had with God, would own those promises given to Abraham and Isaac. And God would identify him, himself later as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he would own those promises. He would believe them. And his sons would become the tribes of Israel and would inherit the promises. We connect with the promises of God not just by reading them or studying them or having head knowledge of them. We connect with them by experiencing God in the midst of what we've heard, what we've seen, by experiencing the heavenly reality like Jacob did. There is a gateway to heaven. There is a stairway to heaven. We are connected to heaven. There is a way in which we can experience God's presence. Jesus, we read in John 1, 47, When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. Then he added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Nathanael had an encounter with God through Jesus Christ. Jesus, who knew him and knew where he was and what he was doing before he even met Nathaniel. And when he shared that revelation, that understanding that he had through the Holy Spirit, Nathaniel was very impressed. He was stunned. He had a revelation who Jesus was, the Son of God, the King of Israel. But Jesus said, this is, this is just the beginning. There is so much more that he has to see, that all of us have to see. And then he talks about the heavens opening and angels ascending and descending. It sounds very familiar, doesn't it? 
It sounds very familiar to, to Jacob's dream. The stairways to heaven, the Lord on the top of the stairways, the angels ascending and descending, the gateway to heaven, the house of God. All these things come together around Jesus Christ. He is the doorway to heaven. He is the gateway to heaven. He is the stairs in which we reach heaven, in which the angels and ascend and descend upon. He is the Son of Man and Son of God. He is that connection we have with heaven. And as the disciples join Jesus in their journey, you see now what happened when, when Jesus came to the disciples and he called them. What did he ask them to do? Come and follow me. Join the journey. Come and follow me. We are going places. We are doing things. We are moving towards a destiny. We are moving towards the promised land. We may go through wildernesses. We may go through difficult times, times of testing and trial. We may go through mountaintop experiences. Didn't they have mountaintop experiences when they followed Jesus? the Mount of Transfiguration. They went through all kinds of things and they experienced God. God was revealed to them. The majesty, the glory of God, the love of God, the kindness of God, the goodness of God, all the character of God was revealed to them through Jesus and their time as they journeyed with him. They walked in faith. They made sacrifices in order to stay on that journey. It was not an easy journey. You can read about it in the Gospels, which are about traveling. They're travel logs. They're journals about the journey of Jesus and his disciples. And in the midst of all that, God continually revealed himself through the Holy Spirit, through the Son, through the Father. And they experienced him more and more. But that also was just the beginning. There were greater things to come at Pentecost and beyond the time when Jesus had ascended into heaven and the Holy Spirit had been poured out. You see, for Jacob, he experienced God being around him being his protection, encountering him in a dream. We experience that too throughout our lives. But there's something even greater than that. See, the New Covenant talks about not only God around us and protecting us and sheltering us and providing for us and helping us in all that we do and, and having experiences with angels and with, with God's presence but the New Testament, because of what Jesus did, because of his death and resurrection, because of the blood of the Lamb that was shed to cleanse us from all sin, enables us to have God in us, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to God, to become the dwelling place of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. We become the house of God, the gateway to heaven, we become the connection between heaven and earth. Angels minister unto us. We are in Jesus Christ. He is our head, the head of the body. So we, more than anything else, should be experiencing God. We should have these God encounters. But sometimes we're, we're dull and we just have to learn to wake up to the reality of what God is doing in our lives. And to be open and to seek his presence. To continue to obey and walk in that journey he has called us to, to follow Christ. 
We do it not just when we have experiences, we do it by faith when there is no experience. When those dry seasons that we go through. We do it not just when things are pleasant and pleasing, but we do it when they're difficult, when they're hard, when our faith is tested. We want to be close to Jesus. We want to continue to follow him. And as we do that, we have those close encounters with God that change our lives, that, that breathe life into the promises that we've heard, that enable us to move forward to our destiny. We have those times when it all is worth it because we experience his presence. And that's why we come together. We come together to share those experiences and to talk about the promises, share our stories, but also to have more of what God has for us unveiled in our lives as we worship and seek the Lord together. The place where you're most likely going to have those God encounters is with his people together when they are in prayer and when they are worshiping and when they are honoring God through preaching of the word. It's there where you're most likely to experience that closeness. Though God will wake us up in the middle of the night, he will speak to us when we're driving in our cars, he will move through ordinary circumstances and he will reveal himself in a hundred different ways if you learn to listen and receive and believe. Amen. So uh, in closing, let us stand and sing this uh, wonderful hymn, Surely the Presence of the Lord.